Okay, I, I want to start okay. start a bit different. I did a peek in my slide, and there's one one more point I want to to to, to tell about, and that's uh, something that dawned on me a few uh, days ago, which is pretty funny when it comes to features in RPM in general. And I realized there's an interesting distribution on how difficult it is to get some changes implemented. And there's a basically bathtub distribution. It's very easy for very small changes. So if you want to add a macro, no one cares. You just do it. It's in there. Someone updates. We update their RPM in Fedora. It's in there. It just works. No one cares. It's easy. And then there are really, really big changes that break the world, that re require replacing yum everywhere, that, that, that will break the distribution and whatever. And they are also easy. We did, we did uh, Boolean uh, expressions, and we just committed it and released it, and didn't do anything, and it magically happened. Probably some people did something, but we didn't. And, and magically, all the infrastructure got fixed, and, and it was very, very, very easy and smooth, for, for us at least. I hear some people, other people had, had things to do, but like we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. That, that's like elsewhere. But there's, there's the funny thing is they're middle-sized <coughs> features, and they're just impossible. You just can't. They're features that don't have the huge benefits, like the big ones, but I have similar um, risks involved, like breaking somewhere randomly. And so they don't, don't get, so the, the, the uh, till the uh, version compare is one of those. It's in there for years. It's very a small. It's, it's a neat little patch. It's only a few lines changed. It's even in RHEL 6. It's it's a back in all yeah, it's even backported in RHEL 6. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't get it in Fedora because, of course, it might break something somewhere I in the machinery, the in the in the backside of the machine where you can't see. And no one knows what it might break, and so they're all afraid, so you can't get it in for years. I still don't I mean, why can't we just do that like just like the other one and see what breaks? Yeah, you can, no, that's but, what but I people won't. People will, people will, will refuse to do it. Who will refuse to do it? Fasco, I think. Yeah, so why did you ask wrong. them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't the one who Well, well the thing, thing is, they, they saw it and first figured they said, well, let's, let's, let's make a new law that benefits it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ask, ask them, who, who, who am yeah. I to ask them? I just implemented it. Oh, I, I actually, I think I should. I should actually, we got a patch from Sousa, yeah, to, 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 be, to be completely honest. So they were, they've been using it like for years. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, as you know, Sousa still exists and they, so it should be fine. So here's the best and most funny part about all that specific feature. Remy has silently been using it for the PHP packages for the past two years. <laughs> and told nobody. And nothing broke. Yeah. <laughs> so. 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 But, but that's, that's just, it's, it, it, it's a funny observation that, that, that the middle thing is, is the hardest to, to get. And so, so, if you have, so if you have ideas, please break the world. Or come up with something small, but 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 not this middle thing. The problem is that middle thing came, seems to move around a bunch. <laughs> well, the, he's using it probably, and nothing breaks because it's he wanted it all the way down to the rail six. So. Yeah. Well, but but the the issue I discussed on the RPM ecosystem about the RFE recently. With the uh, with the rich dependency, yeah. Uh, for everybody else, I, I had the issue that if you are building on RHEL seven package for Fedora twenty eight, uh, you're screwed. Uh, you're screwed because uh, you will suddenly come to a Red Hat RPM config package. Uh, which use weak dependency, those re rich dependencies. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there is a requires uh, anobin if GCC. GCC. And uh, RHEL 7 RPM doesn't recognize yep. this. Uh, so the error message is 
unrecognized tag uh, parenthesis if, which is obviously what the fuck. Uh, uh, instead of saying uh, you need RPM uh, with capability foo, or instead you need RPM bigger than version of something, yeah, the which will be probably better. Yeah, the problem is that we do have those mechanisms, but not for spec files. They exist at the source package level. So if you're doing a rebuild against the source package, you'd actually get the correct failure. No, no, no. Uh, actually, there is a mechanism because uh, uh, there is a uh, requires in that package. Uh, I'm requiring RPM build, reach depths, uh, oh, right. yeah, some, yeah, some yeah, version. Yeah, I don't, I don't but the problem the is problem that, is that, 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 RPM, that, that RPM parse all the dependencies together. So it will pass the, I'm, I'm reading, uh, reach dependency, some version, it's OK. I will, I'm putting it to the sec. And then we'll come to the uh, if GC, yeah, GCC, and, then and, and it will break. I, I don't know this. So what I propose yeah, is we that uh, we, we, uh, RPM should read those R RPM lib, first as is something first, yeah. and then say, OK, this is good. We will proceed further. Uh, so then if has there never been a case where something like this would have been the logical conclusion to do this? No. Wow. That probably that actually I, surprises I mean, me. I mean, not, not that I have any clue about it, the 20 years uh, on all packages, but but I guess that not because the the syntax for the dependencies has not changed like in ever. Right. That's the first yeah, time we basically changed exactly changed, once. Changed well, it changed <laughs> from, from because we also added extra grammar, which it breaks on too, the weak dependency tags. So, yeah, because until Hannu did that backport to like read the tags in the first place, yeah, it, but, but, it but that's not a syntax change. But, but, but that's, not a, that's not a problem here because first, RPM ignores all text it doesn't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for binary packages. Right. And it, of course, would break the spec file with the yeah. more or less proper uh, error message like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And so, so it's a very spe specific thing that actually didn't happen because we, we never I ever that before. changed uh, the I'm syntax. True is that those three dependency was a little bit harsh because previously even the weak dependency were present in RPM for a long, long time and we didn't feel them. Uh, so they have been used only after long, long years. So the, 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 uh, the rich dependency yeah, is starting see. after quite short of time, like year yeah, or two. Yes, we, we s we've sped up the, the speed of RPM development yeah. quite a bit. Which is good. Yeah, but, but, I mean, but you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can only complain about one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> the, only, the only issue is that nothing else changed to accommodate the fact that things are actually now moving at the proper development base. Yeah. Yeah, it, it took us actually a, quite a while like, to, to get like Fedora infrastructure yep. to, to move also with a pace that actually can keep step I, with I, I, I'm not objecting. What, what I'm objecting no. is that if, if you are speed up the pace, you should have some mechanism saying you need this version or this capability to proceed to proceed this article. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, even if you had it, wouldn't help you because you're because it's already there in the back. No, the thing, the thing, the thing is, you're actually fighting the problem with the old RPM. Yeah, you're well, running on the path. It will help me diagnose the problem. Yeah, and it, I mean, basically, it's it's actually not doing something wrong. It's just not very helpful with the error. Yeah, yeah. Which which is uh, which is a feature of RPM basically all around. Like yeah. even crappy error messages. Oh. <laughs> I mean, at least they now come in color. Well, we are here to improve things. Well, so now the crappy error messages come in color. Do they use back ticks? Yes. Uh, you get this message from Yum and not from RPM. Well, Yum uh, from. Uh, yeah, you get it. Well, I'm not trying to say this situation because <laughs> that's that's doom anyway. <laughs> I'm, 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 so I'm trying to say situation when uh, uh, after three years from now we will include function teleport inside RPM and current RPM doesn't recognize it. So I'm trying to say no. situation yeah. from three years. So, from so now. The, the general the general thing with RPM is we've always. Uh, 
guaranteed backward compatibility, but not forward compatibility, which is the issue here. And yep. you basically can. If, if you start doing forward compatibility guarantees, you, you lose every other you, game. You, you basically, you basically <laughs> can't do it. You basically stopped moving. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've yeah, seen yeah. other pro projects that tried. No. Yum, for example, and no, they're no. dead now. And they're dead now for this reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I would just have a room for a better, better. And yeah, it will, it will mean that you think it's break and, and we have to deal with that or, or not. But more. I mean, the simple trick of like processing the uh, RPM lib style dependencies first and querying for whether those capabilities yeah. are supported is not a bad thing, but the problem is right now that I think every high level package manager actually ignores all of those. Yeah. So like they don't read them, they don't actually even see them because they're not exported by mm. create repo C, so like there's no point to investigate them. Yeah. Okay. So all those tools would need to be changed. I'm not saying that it's a hard change or anything like that, but we yeah. don't actually have a mechanism right yeah. now to all, test all of the, I mean, they are stripped out of, of, of the metadata with the argument that, well, it's basically redundant. If you're running your package source from the wrong repository, you're doomed anyway. I mean, I don't think that's quite a fair yeah, remark, but I, yeah, but I, I get it. But, but I mean, there are a lot of them in there in every package, and so it saves a quick, quite some lines. In yeah, it does. Although, I mean, I don't if, know. You would, if you actually have a special collection up the top that I could just read which ones are in for a repo, then that would yeah. actually be a neat optimization trick. Because if they're the same everywhere, and you can yeah, just say course. the maximal subset of all the capabilities that this repo requires, yeah. Then you go there. Yep. Yeah. 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 One issue I have, uh, uh, I hit it several mm -hmm. times. When you accidentally do something like you put into the post on, or, uh, thread arms yeah. a script, if you put something like exit one, so you screw your script, thread arms to thread uninstall. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, then there is no way to uh, to fix it because even if you fix next version of the yeah. package, uh, RPM always try to run the pre -AMP script of the previous script, and uh, uh, the administrator had to manually uh, step in and run RPM uh, dash erase uh, dash no scripts. So every admin in the world have to do that to, to fix your uh, own mistake. So it would be nice if uh, if I ever do something like that, I can somehow override this mechanism and say, don't run this pre-anst or something of the previous script. So I think Michael Schroeder at some point <coughs> suggested having an update script which would also make a lot of other things much less ugly. Yeah, because you wouldn't be reusing the scripts that you assume are for install for, for that kind of thing as well. Yeah, you could. You, you start getting into weird states, though, because now you have to separately consider what's happening for those stages. And then now you start having the requirement, you know, maybe we need to have a delayed script execution so things actually run correctly all the time, because the way that transactions can happen may necessitate some kind of special sequencing to make everything happen. That's not necessarily easy to do currently because of how ordering actually works. Yeah. Transactions get really funny when yeah, you for, for pre on that's probably not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, the transactions get really, really weird when you start talking about like uh, anything that could cause the breakage where you want to like split or override a script operation because you don't actually know what other things might depend on it. I mean, it may be nothing. And it might be still better than, than the worst case, but like it's a difficult option to expose, which is why actually I think only one high level package manager exposes it at all. And they expose it in a very, very uh, select, uh, selective way. Because it, it gets very painful and it requires knowledge that an admin just may not necessarily have about what decision to do to make things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the, the right thing would be to have some type that overrides the old script plots. And that could be the way used in the next. Uh, like it would be a, like a script. transaction flag that you could push and say like, keep this as a factor. And then no, you don't want to have a transaction flag because that's something the user has to do. 
you would have, want to have that like as part that of was a package plan. as a package as a package uh, tag basically. Yeah. Well, you could put it as an argument for the scriptlet. Like, if you're overriding the same scriptlet from an older package, just as a dash like over mm -hmm. dash dash override, then that would tell RPM, you know, I don't care what happened in this old one, don't run it ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My guess is this will get interesting soon, as soon as you <laughs> think about obsolete and whatever, and who back at which package is actually meant. But uh, maybe you have. Maybe a 90% solution is better than none. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, doing things by, by running around and typing commands <coughs> is always big. And really right with there. Well, what we can do is, um, well, there might be some easy way, like, you know, define some macro, which is writing some temporary file like in great trans, like uh, the NVR, and for instance, do not run post time. And then the, basically each uh, trigger will check if such file exists there. And if it's there, then it RPM will run. You don't want to disable for, for all packages. No, you want to disable it for, yeah, for, for, for the one. The NVR, and then you basically open it. Yeah. But that's the thing is basically we but then you could also then, then you could also just have a tag and put it into a header. Well, the problem with the new tag is that you would need some time to put forty everywhere. And the, with the just simple file, we can do it now. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, not so sure. It's a really hefty thing. Probably easier to just have to tag and then evaluate the tag on, on that time. Mm -hmm. And then filter out all the uh, script cuts that be wrong. Because the thing is, you could actually use uh, the full strength of the dependency system for that. So oh, what specifically? To prevent broken scripts from being run. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could basically just cancel script and then for name smaller than something. So like the inverse of the, of what triggers do, they just not yeah, write scripts. Yeah, basically a, a <coughs> inverse trigger. Yeah, <laughs> nullify script if this yeah, condition because, is true. Because because triggers are not horrible enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean you're describing triggers except the other they do yeah. the opposite effect. Yeah, basically. You want to write it on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where, did I put it? Where did I put it? Trigger language. No, scripts. Which is actually not a bad idea in general. Because maybe you just want to over, you just want to ignore all the script ones. Because there are cases, like obsolete's case, actually this would be helped by because in obsolete's case, a lot of times when you've replaced one with a completely different package, and it happens to have the obsoletes, the scriptlets that execute in that case are probably not actually going to work correctly. Because in many cases in obsoletes, is it necessarily going to include a provides meaning that it's going to be functionally equivalent and things are yeah, but guaranteed to work-ish? Yeah, but they are not. They often are, but like giving the ability to deal with that last bit by saying, like, in this case, you're triggering based on the fact that this condition is being obsolete. Like, just nullify all the scripts. That's actually a pretty easy way to like just avoid that if it turns out to be a problem. Yeah, right. Because you can match. You can basically match on all other. Uh, you match on all conditions. On all conditions, you can match for different names. Or Congratulations, we have a hundred percent solution somehow. <laughs> <laughs> that was just too easy. We will probably find, find like five other things that are wrong with this. As yeah, as we try to implement it. But might actually be not that, diff that that's another thing that's insane in RPM. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem, there are two basically two ways this can end up. <laughs> the one is you add like five lines and it just works. <laughs> <laughs> the most more common version is you have to rewrite like three subsystems and then it's still not quite there. <laughs> and then there was a type somewhere that becomes into, 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 <laughs> into add more function to it. There's no way of telling them apart in, in advance. Okay, so another easy thing. <laughs> <laughs> easy. Uh, what I envy uh, Debian board uh, is the, uh, their uh, oh, uh, what is it? Uh, 
install okay or something like that. We have we have the macro underscore install lang length uh, where you can decide which locales can be installed. Yes. But you have to define okay. it somewhere the macro and you have to know which locales install. So somehow first print it and then put something in the macro. While the VR board has some some command where you will have just nice and curious uh, menu, which will list all the locales and you will just click. Uh, I don't want these li uh, locales like Italian, Chinese, and, and so on. So you're talking about dev com. Uh, well, it's dev con It's handled by dev con as well, but they, they have standalone application as well. Uh, uh, and it will delete all installed locales, which I didn't select, like the Italian. Uh, and next time I'm installing package, it will don't install Italian locale and it's safe. Gigabytes of that. So basically, we're missing the part where, like, you decide to set install lines, and I want to retroactively purge all the crap if it doesn't match that. Yeah. Because our team already and knows all that stuff. Yeah. And somewhere it will define the uh, uh, underscore install lines with, with those lines. I, I mean, I that choose. part is easy. The part yeah. you're asking for is like retroactively purging. Well, yeah, but no. But actually, it shouldn't be that difficult because if you're using the Boolean dependencies, you should be able to do that. And I, and I think most of the most of those already reoriented around the yeah. dependencies for like so, so it should, it's should it's actually be screen. already like 80 90% there. It's basically just missing. No. I don't know about the details, I've not looked into this. I, the last time I checked this a while ago, but they were actually already using Boolean uh, yeah. dependencies for this. And actually, DNF should be able to prune them if, if, the, if, if the matching uh, packages go no. away. Yeah. So what what I'm just missing is yeah. a nice user user inter yeah. interface yeah. which will allow me to do that. Sure. It's not about real problem. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Well, well it, there is there is still the case of when people are using find line and they don't break out the lines into into separate yeah. packages and stuff. That's where like if you set install lines, you want to have a way to read, just go back to the RPM data and purge all the things that don't match your yeah. language. Because RPM stops caring about those files anyway once you set that. So purging them is not a big deal. We just it's not easy to find that information because it's not like something you can think about or know how to look at the database for. But a tool for doing that would probably not be that bad. I mean I am all open to adding 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 more stuff if it's really needed, but I, the one of the hope for for the for the Boolean expression was to be able to solve issues like this in a in a generic way from, from an RPA perspective. Mm -hmm. By setting up the packages the proper way. And it should be. Yeah. It's basically mm -hmm. just a question of, of doing the tooling on the, the user land side. Mm -hmm. So uh, while we are on the uh, Boolean stuff, uh, would it be easy to add Boolean provides? Oh boy, <laughs> we just had this conversation. We did. I'm not aware of it. So so so, so I did think about this, and I decided not to for a reason. And the main reason is it requires RPM to actually do solving to be able to check the, whether it can install the package. Right now, uh, RPM has a very simple check whether it can install a set of packages. It basically just evaluates each uh, Boolean term. And if it's true, it's fine. If it's false, it's obviously an error. And it's simple to implement. And it's also simple to understand. So while the dependency solving is complicated, checking the result is easy to see if, it's, if this is working. If you have the Boolean stuff on the, on the provide side also, it's not at all trivial to decide whether uh, a set of packages is insolvable. We effectively would need lib solve in RPM now. Yeah, basically. Yeah. That's that what, then, that but then it, then it, but it, I mean, it's not only an implementation problem. It's also a, a problem of people figuring out why it's not working. Everything is very complicated. Because you can try that. I have a package installed that has a provide that's conditional on yeah. something I want to install. Yeah. And I want to install this. This is not yet provided. Oh God. But if I would install it, it would be provided. Oh, that's. Uh, yeah. Basically, basically. Well, all well, those, that's all, those, all those provides are now basically they are just there, and then they would, but then they would basically split up in, into a quantum state. <laughs> yeah, and you basically, have to, you basically have to decide for each of them which value they do have. Well, <laughs> the workaround we want to do for this is uh, 
empty packages. Empty yeah. packages. Yeah, yeah. So so package like without files. That just requires some two packages. And yeah, so we have the same, basically the same problem with Rust because there are so called great features. Yes. So yeah, exactly yeah. the same in Python. Uh, so basically, what we have decided that we cannot do it in RPM, so we will just create sub packages, which, so the main package will just uh, depend on grateful if this uh, sub package is getting installed. So the sub packages will be empty, but the uh, page itself. And if we can yep. get automatic generation of sub pages, then it won't be so painful for you anymore. It's now like you have to create 15, 20, 30, 100 sub pages manually. Yeah, we need a well, <laughs> spec generator anyway. Yeah, but once you. Oh, you don't, uh, some of the spec generators that are out there would actually horrify you in how they work. So, well, don't don't please, ask please, for things please, you don't know what, what please, the consequences would be. Please don't type. Don't ask for things that you don't understand what the consequences might be because they're they're kind of horrifying. All all. Well, I'm yeah. only asking for RPM to be a super set of uh, what the Python ecosystem already has. Yeah. No. The. the the feature tag thing and the basically environment markers and all those all those things. They're they're the same kind of tricky problem with Rust, but the the core issue for doing it is that if we turn provides into expressions, then evaluating them becomes so painful that it actually might not be possible to debug dependencies anymore. The, that's what it comes down to. If you can't debug dependencies, then like, what the fuck are you doing? Because now you need a way to tell RPM fake things to be able to get expressions that you want to know. And there's not actually a way to really do that. Okay. I mean, it could be done, but like, that's a lot of work that possibly could be solved in a different way. Like the. The way that the Rust crates are doing it right now is that they do um, uh, with the with the provides and requires statements. The provides basically all the markers are broken out as separate provides, and then the requires statement does with clauses so that the same package must provide all of those things together. And so we basically avoid having to have provides now because the requires says one package must provide all of those provides together. <coughs> Which we haven't recently. Yeah. Well, this was the reason why width was added. Yep. Because that way we could avoid having map and provides. Because that was the, the alternative. That's probably worth writing it down somewhere at some yeah. point how to do that. Yeah. I, I, I wrote it in a mailing list post, which is, in, in retrospect, not exactly the best place to put that. Can you resend that to me and I put, or can put it up on the RPM or? Yep. I can do that. Uh, website. Yeah, because it, it, it does well to have some examples of like why you would use. Yeah, because the, use that. that's that's like it's not that well known. It's just yeah. what it comes down to. Because it's a brand new dependency expression we added in RPM four fourteen, precisely to solve this problem. Because Rust was really hard before that. Um, what what Igor wants to do is another way to do it, and it's technically more efficient if there's multiple providers of a feature, but in practice that doesn't turn out to happen that often in most ecosystems. The only ones where this kind of happens in is Rust and Go, and Go is stupid, so we don't care. Um, <laughs> and Rust actually has a bunch of different ways of dealing with this problem internally, and a lot of those can be flattened into expressions that we're already using in RPM to handle this. So it's only kind of edge casey, and in most cases, Zebra just winds up upgrading the dependency anyway, and so then who the fuck cares anymore? And so, um, but yeah, uh, in, in the Python case, and I think most ecosystems, even Ruby, uh, would also benefit from just using the width dependency to just match the markers so that they all bind to the same package. And yeah, I'll send you, I'll resend you the link to my mailing list post which explains why we use rel width, and I'll write a small blurb and like we can figure yeah. out how to put that on the RPM work site so that people know about this because that is the reason we added that, that yeah. dependency. Yeah, there are a couple of interesting things that can be done with those uh, Boolean impressions. So, is it worth maybe talking through your so use I, case? 
Yeah, I don't understand with then how it would solve. So, 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 so you have to, so for everyone to, to get. So you have a package that gains a, a provide a feature if it is combined with another package. Yes. Basically, but basically, yes. The the issue basically you need something that represents basically the space in between those two packages. For example, I have a document generator that gains PDF support if PDF windows exist. Yeah. Right. So the so obvious thing is, of course, having, having a uh, small package that represents those bridge, which is annoying, but of course, obviously works. And so you, how, how do you do this with in Rust? So we just uh, check the versions. So basically, uh, there is, like, for example, we have a few requirements. Like, I need version which is compatible with 1.0, which means you want any version uh, between 1.0 and 2.0. So, so you, but you're doing this in the requiring package. Right, you're doing the requiring. So that's basically the opposite yeah, uh, thing of no. what he wants. He, right. wants. he wants to provide basically. Want yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants it. Yeah, everyone wants it. So uh, if, if putting it as a Boolean provide be too catastrophic, that we already probably decided it would be, can we gain a new thing for RPMs? that would specify extra features? Or is it like just an overkill and we should it's just stick with something? Well, you, could, you can probably just write a macro that creates the sub package. Yeah, if we get macros that create sub packages? I, 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 I mean, they fear, exist. I fear, I fear you can actually do that. So the yeah. kernel does this. A bunch of, actually a bunch of packages have sub package generating it's, macros. It's, it's even worse. The Debug info packages oh, uh, used to be a macro. It's kind of still. Mm -hmm. it's so but mm -hmm. let's let's get yeah, like a little bit more specific. specific. Macro hive. It's really the, the, not the ideal. Python dependency uh, generator. Yeah. And the generator itself create the sub packages. We were yeah, sure. we were gonna. I'm gonna have to write a description about this for you because like we were t we were talking about this earlier. So so basically. Uh, Automatic package creation is on my back of my mind for quite a while. If not really, just a couple of open questions how to actually do that. What it would look and, like. And there have been discussion with Panu if we really want to do that because it. So 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 it basically is a, it's one of those control questions. The question is who's controlling how the package is going to look like. Is it in control of the packager, or is it con the control of the distribution that provides like the patterns for the, for the sub packages, or is it both? Because or is it, it both? Because it can have overrides. Or yeah. Yeah. so that's all still to be determined. Yeah. So but one of the things is that I'm going to look into writing like at least a design proposal for Florian to figure out like whether this will actually be workable in a way that doesn't make everyone's heads explode for having sub package generation, because it's actually something I want to, because in one of the distributions I work in, Magia, we split out every goddamn library into its own sub package, and so it takes a lot of work, and it's a fuckload of boilerplate, and I don't like doing it, and I just would like it to be automatic. And that's with Python stuff, with Perl stuff, libraries, it get, it get, the list of sub packages gets pretty big once you start you know, dealing with yeah. a lot of stuff. You could, you could also uh, like split out, instead of libraries, like no arch, yeah. Files and stuff like it. Uh, documentation. documentation um, language packs automatically. Mm -hmm. There's a lot like of that. there's a lot of things that can can be leveraged. It's and just a matter of like figuring out how you want that to look and how you want the the mechanisms to work. Yeah. The, the problem basically is that the spec file itself is basically oblivious of how actually the package looks. 
the, so you don't have a file list. This is only generated basically after the spec file is parsed. So, so, so questions, what's the workflow there? But at some point, we want to have that. And that's definitely, definitely one of the plans for the future, to be able to specify how sub are generated automatically. It will make sense to kind of formalize what we would like to gain that the Python extras requires. So uh, and, and give it to you so you can then compare it to what you are preparing and okay. so you can just see if the four of us together. Yeah, I, I think we might want to I implement I it using macros first, kind of or a uh, spec generator first, if to see if stuff yeah. actually works this way, and yeah. then compare notes and try to push some solution. In so if you want to look at an, uh, a quote unquote spec generator tool, uh, much as boring is going to kill me for mentioning this. Autospec is actually one example of this. It's from Intel. And what Autospec does is it builds the package over and over again and analyzes the output every time it changes the options to figure out what all the sub packages are following a, a pattern list to identify how it's constructed. And it ultimately produces the final RPM with the rules set up, the descriptions done, license determined, and then it spits out everything um, internally consistent. But it takes hundreds of runs to get some packages to get there. <laughs> this is the wow. reason why nobody wants to do this. Because the problem with it is you're talking about mechanically understanding software. And so the, the reason we're not talking about full blown, we don't, we have one line and then spec magically happens is because of that. No, no, uh, what I want is basically take all the information that's now in spec files and push it to the upstream metadata. Well, that's a different problem because the upstream metadata has to actually be sufficient for that to work. Well, well yes, but we have it. some control over that, actually. Do you? We're, yeah, yeah, I'm a Python developer, right? So, I mean, <laughs> it's still, you still have the ecosystem to argue with, and I mean argue. Well, definitely. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, I mean we are, we are not, we're not talking about easy problems. Yeah. 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 That's a different topic, but yeah, it's our own domain, so the yeah. weight is on us. I mean, if you want to push that metadata there, then sure. Um, it's probably not a bad thing, of course. It's, it's yeah. also a problem in, in the Python ecosystem. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the thing is, has lots of problems. with all the faults yes. that mm -hmm. RPM has, it does some things right. Oh, it's so much better. <laughs> and <laughs> and oh, I, I guess some of those that depend uh, packaging systems can still learn a trick or two, like doing proper dependencies. Yeah. For example, this 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 is actually a is big issue for Ruby gems because when we were uh, rebuilding all the uh, gems uh, in copper, it's like eighty thousand of packages. Uh, if uh, if uh, the policy of Ruby gem is if you don't uh, state license, it's it means proprietor. So we uh, the game to spec actually add at uh, end at that point and uh, reject to proceed. Uh, so if we somehow get, for example, for for gems, the the license back to the Ruby gems, that would be awesome. Uh, even for a few hundred packages, that, that that would be awesome. So if you will start that in in, in Python land and you will, you will have some how to do that, and um, we will do that. Well, Ruby the just main maybe problem awesome. with the licenses is that every single distribution and basic upstream uses different licenses. So, for example, I know for Rust in upstream now nowadays there is a check for SPDX, but it doesn't mean that Fedora should use it because in Fedora, for example, we have ASL space 2.0, but the SPDX format is. Apache dash 2.0. Oh, you can sure. always uh, well, do do some translation. The main uh, problem with that the is, main is, to, is to find the license, yeah. actually. So if you find it in Fedora that the license is GPL uh, and all, it's only missing in the metadata, um, it's, it's easy. Yeah, well, pushing the, the problem with that isn't actually, your case is absolutely fine, and so it's unfortunately is. This was a bad example. The, bad, the good example where this goes horribly wrong is BSD and MIT licenses where Tom is going to drink because there's almost 100 different variants of all of those. And the, the problem with that is that in SPDX line, every single bloody variant has its own tag. 
And the distributions that do use SPDX, this problem is fine. They can map up and down, all sideways and whatever. But in Fedora and Magia land, where we use the Fedora tag system, we are not insane enough to have to like try to identify every goddamn flavor. We just call it BSD and MIT and call it a day. But this means that our data is actually inadequate for upstream systems. Yeah. So like that that that's one of the reasons why this becomes a big problem because um, if we decide that we're going to move to SPDX stuff, which is a conversation that keeps happening over and over again, For then years. yes, I know, I know. I actually instigated one of the more recent ones when we were starting to talk about Rust stuff, and yeah, that's a conversation. Um, but if we want to start talking about doing that, which is a different type of problem, then that makes our data a little bit more valuable if we want to push that into Python or well, Python uses our system, which is a different problem. Ruby uh, and all the other ones. It would it would make sense in that case, but like there's no winning when it comes to pushing stuff like license data backwards and forwards because you can't guarantee that they're going to be consistent between the two systems and parcel. Um, huh. Like for some of the big major ones, like the copyleft ones and the ones that are formulaic permissive licenses, yes, but everything else, no. And that's that's the problem is that increasingly you have more of the less formulaic ones than the more formulaic ones because they're just that's just what people want to do now. You know, being mostly corporate environment developers that feel more for that kind of stuff, that's what they lean towards. So it becomes actually harder, not easier, for us to be able to provide uh, value in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, we are probably running out of time. So, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I will just show the, to the audience project, uh, which is my pet project, uh, because I'm doing training for newbies in RPM. So explaining them what RPM is and all those basic like URL name and version. And how they are happy for the show it's over. Yeah, uh, so I create uh, this wizard, uh, which is like like uh, uh, really uh, for the newbies. So you, you start with a package name, uh, full, uh, and you have the link to the guidelines, how to craft the names, version, Four, three, wow, like, oh, five, oh, and at yeah. the end you will get some yeah. spec. Yeah. So it's it's really at the start. Yeah. Uh, start. But if anyone wants a spec wizard is not quite the same thing as a spec as a as you know, what's like you know, a spec wizard. Yeah. This this is probably way easier to pull up than uh, yeah. dynamically yeah. figuring out what everything should be. Well, this is something I'm working on. Anyhow, but I think I remember something.